How's it going y'all? Titans fan 920 and today we have finally made it to Throne of Eldraine standard season. I'm pretty pumped about it. I've been looking forward to this for a while now. Ready to see the new cards. Ready to get them in play and get my hands on them. It's been just like a little kid with cake in front of them. Uh, but I've had blood, sweat, and tears. Well, mostly just tears actually go into making these decks. But I hope you guys enjoy. If you're new, stick around. Stay a while. We'll be playing some of these on the recordings uh, once we get them on our hands. But without further ado, let's look at these decks. Let's go. So the first deck we'll look out here is an old friend. This is Simic Flash. Uh, for those of you unaware, Simic Flash got some pretty good toys with Throne of Eldraine. Uh, we still have the, you know, Respectful Sailors in the one drop slot. We still have a little Brian Board Cutthroat, the powerhouse there at two. But he has a new friend on the two drop slot, and that is Wildborn Preserver. Anyone not familiar with this card is a one in a green, Flash and Reach for 2-2. Two, two. Pretty good stats already. But it has this clause, whenever another non-human creature enters a battlefield under your control, you can pay X. Whenever you do, you can put that many X or you can put X one one counters on Wildborn Preserver. So say late game, we just drop a simple Spectral Sailor, for instance. You know, we have four, maybe five mana left over. We can pay five, and all of a sudden our Wildborn Preserver has five counters put on it. So this increases the clock we have in a big, big way. Still, still allows us to play at instant speed and just really be able to have something buff the board up super, super quick. Another cool toy that it got here was Braz and Borrower. Uh, this is one that was spoiled very late in the spoiler season, so I'm glad I waited to make this video. Uh, it has the instant side of the adventure, Petty Theft. It's one in a blue, return target non-land permanent, uh, and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Now, this replaces Unsown in the deck, and it's one more one more mana for it. However, it does do non-land permanent instead of just creatures. That part is good. Uh, the downside of this is you can't target your own things. You know, last time we had a bunch of plays where we bounce our filled mystic and recount or something. That was pretty cool. Can't do that anymore, but still, I feel like having the extra versatility to get the non-land permanence is pretty good. And on top of that spell being good already, for three mana, two blue blue, we have Flash Flying, Brazen, uh, the card, Brazen Bar. Brazen Bar can block only creatures flying, that doesn't matter, whatever. It's a three power flyer for three. Another Flash creature, something at the three drop slot we really needed because before, the only three drop th thing we had here was Sinister Sabotage. Going across the list here, we still got the four Frilled Mystics, still got the Ambush and nothing changes there. Uh, since we lost out on Syncopate, I'm having to play Quench. It's not the same. It's not going to be as good, I'm afraid, but we're still going to use it for the time being and try it out. It's still, I feel like you, it's kind of a necessary evil because you need to keep little Teferi off the board. So even if you're on the draw here, this gives you an option to do so. If you look beside it, you get also probably the best card in this set. I know it looks boring to a lot of people, but once upon a time, it feels like just money in this deck. Um, you know, it's an instant. If it's the first spell you cast with this game, you may pay it without paying its mana cost. Free spells, usually pretty good in magic, just FYI. Uh, but even if you if you don't do that, you have the two mana. Look at the top top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put one into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, this is great because besides helping us dig for thrilled mystics or dig for a while, not pass ambushers, whatever we need, this also can get versatility by grabbing the Brazen Borrower. That way you can still use the Petty Theft Adventure. But overall, the deck got some really, really good upgrades here. Also, if you've seen the land spot, we have one Castle Garenberg. I don't know how often that's going to come up. Also, the two Castle Vantress. Um, it's nice to have these lands and kind of do things with them if we need to, if we're kind of drawing dead late game. But don't expect to use them too, too much. But again, Castle Garenberg with Wildborn Preserver, if you use it that way, it's an extra mana. Get one more creature or one more counter on there. It seems pretty good. But Simic Flash, the deck I'm very much looking forward to in the season. Let's go to the next deck. All right, the next deck we'll look at is one that's gained a lot, a lot of popularity. I know a bunch of people are probably going to try to build it. We have Mardu Knights. Uh, put this up on Tapped Out like a week ago, just a placeholder, placeholder. I've been working with it, and it's got like six or seven hundred views on there, so that's kind of cool. Uh, the way I, I feel like there's a few different ways you can go with this. For one, just choosing your colors, because I feel like Mardu is a viable color combination, but the mana is a little bit difficult for it. It may be better off just going straight ores off, or possibly even Rakdos or Boros. I don't think so. But I've decided to give it a go with the whole the whole Mardu package here. As you'll see, I'm choosing to go to more of a low of the ground aggressive deck. I feel like especially at the beginning of a meta, you want to be more aggressive and not really try to go too mid-rangey when you don't know what to expect. And this deck has some fast, fast pieces to it. So you'll see we have 12 one drops. That's right, 12 one drops. We have four fervent champion, a one mana first strike with haste, one one. Uh, whenever it attacks, another target creature knight you control gets plus one plus over to end the turn. Already that right there is great. Also has the last ability that equip ability is to, um, you activate the target for a champion, costs three less to activate. Uh, you'll see we do play one of of Enverclave in the deck. That's the only card we really play that it matters with. I don't really like the other equipment in the set for it, even though some that are probably playable for knights. But 
just a one man a one a one man a one one first strike case with the the pump trigger seems pretty good enough by itself. Uh, we also have four nine of the Ebon Legion. Don't need to explain this card and why it's so good. It's a knight. It fits in the deck really well. And then probably one of the better two drop or one drops in the deck for the knights is Venerable Knight. It is a two one. So we got a little Savannah Savannah Knight. Uh, whenever Vener Venerable Knight dies, put a one one counter on target knight you control. So you know he's. Passing the sword along if he dies, giving it to his brother, falling in arms. It's admirable, really. Uh, in the two-drop slot, we have Inspiring Veteran. That's your lord. You know, any kind of good deck like this wants its lord. Uh, Smitten Swordmaster is a 2-1 with lifelink, but it also has an adventure where you can have an opponent get lose, lose life equal to the number of uh, knights you control, I think. Can't see it on here, but uh, I think the card's pretty sweet there. One of the other new cards you got spoiled that we're going to play try out here in the three drop slot and again we don't have many threes here because we're pretty low to the ground but we have a claim contender whenever a claim con a blah, 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 whenever a claim contender enters the battlefield if you control another knight which we probably will look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal a knight aura equipment or legendary artifact card from among them and put the rest put once your hand put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order so basically this is a, a militia bugler almost almost taken away uh, three three for three is already a you know a fine body. It's kind of what you're paying for stat wise, but getting to grab another creature or thing is pretty pretty good. Um, back down two drop slot, we have Wintermore Commander as a four of uh, two and whatever depth touch where its power is equal to the number of dice you control. Hopefully, and whenever it attacks, uh, another knight you control gets indestructible in the turn. Sorry, I'm trying to read these on my screen now. It's getting pretty hard, making my eyes shot go bad, but. Uh, a two a two power death touch machine here is already pretty good. If you can buff that toughness up and make it really hard to kill, that's gonna make you know combat hell for somebody. And giving another knight indestructible is another pretty good thing you want to have here. Next up in the two drop slot, we have worthy knight. One and a white. Whenever you cast a knight spell, create a one one white human creature token. Hello, hero precinct one. Nice disguise you have there. Don't need to talk much about this card because we've been talking about so much in spoiler season already, but Murderous Rider, we have some removal here, we have a knight, and just overall, again, another thing we can fetch with the claim contender, so that way we still have the removal we can fetch and get a body afterwards. Pretty sweet. Removal wise, two shock, two legions in. We have two shock or fire artisan, which I know may look a little bit funky, but that's the top end of the deck there. And it's just a way to dig more white knights. You know, we get this down, nobody wants to attack into it, and then you're able to start playing two knights a turn more than likely as low as our curve is. Seems good. And lastly, the big old six drops that don't really cost six. Emberclave, the Circle of Loyalty. Both of these synergize really well with the deck. Synergize really well with Knights. And they should maybe be more than just one ofs. But with that mana cost there, I don't want to get too, too risky. So I figured I'd just try them as one ofs. Otherwise, we got the mana base. Thank goodness we have Tournament Grounds. I think that kind of steadies us up enough to where we can play Knights and not be too worried about the mana. Uh, trying out a Fable Passage in here to see if that works. Overall, it looks like Knight's got some pretty cool toys. Uh, they have they have enough toys where this is probably not the right build of it, but this is my, my take at it. We'll see how it goes in standard. Hopefully it's pretty good. We'll see. So next up is probably one of my favorites that I've made here so far because it seems like it'd be a lot of fun. This is Gruel Ironcrag Feet. For those of you not familiar with that card, it's one of the ones that got spoiled. One red, red, red. So four mana total. Add seven red. You can cast one more spell this turn. So the whole goal with this deck is to hopefully get it out on turn three if you can, possibly turn four, whatever you gotta do, baby. But uh, we have Ravager Worms in this deck. That actually doesn't work great with Ravager Worm. Now I think about it, we may edit that part out later. But uh, we have you have, we have Ilharg. Ilharg is the one I really want to get with this because being able to Ilharg and, and drop down a Draku Seth, which I know the attack attack trigger doesn't go on the stack there, but still just have seven power creatures swinging through the air is pretty good. Uh, we get Cavalier Flames, which even with Cavalier Flames by itself, uh, you play Iron Crag, you can drop this down, pay to haste it, and you got a 7-5 a seven five creature attacking. Pretty dang good. There's so many broken things you can do with this, especially with the OR, it just makes kind of, some of your jaws nutty. You can also just casually, you know, turn 2 Paradise Druid, turn 3 Iron Crag Feet, play Chandra the Awakened Inferno. I don't know, that seems pretty good to me. Uh, we still have Once Upon a Time in here helping us find those pieces we need for our lands and the creatures to set, set everything up. I went with Incubation Druid over um, <clears throat> Leafkin Druid. Reason being is because that triple red is kind of hard to hit off the Iron Crag feet, so we really want to have something that can tap for multiple sources of mana. So even though I like the three power on the butt of, <laughs> I said butt, Leafkin Druid, I think Incubation Druid is the way to go here. 
We have some Rhythm of the Wilds out there, so we can try to haste things out. So that any, if we get a Draco Seth, just drop down Draco Seth. Bam, bam, bam with all the triggers. Seems pretty good. Will this deck be competitive? Not quite sure, but I really want to try it. It looks like a lot of fun to me, so hopefully it looks like a lot of fun to you. We'll try that out. So the next deck we'll talk about is one that terrifies me probably more than any deck here. This is Mono Red Cavaclade slash Torbron Aggro. Um, for those of you who haven't seen Torbron, he's a 4 mana Dwarf Noble, 2-4. If a red sorcerer you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus 2 instead. This makes your Shocks 1 mana 4 damage spells. This makes your Chandra Acolyte of Flames start swinging for 3, three damage apiece and then when they sack, they do more damage. That's just, that's just so disgusting. Uh, people, this is going to change the way that this deck plays because before you could always kind of ping people with Cavaclade Calamity and get some chunk damage in there and you can still kill them outright with Chandra Spitfire as we can still do now. However, with, with Tor Run in there, they have to hold up removal for this because if they don't, they, I mean, they can just die out of nowhere in so many ways. Uh, so what we have here, we have four foot, foot light fiends because again, with Tor Brawn and Cavaclade, it just works out super, super well. Score Spitter is going to be really, really good in the deck. We got Fervent Champion, which is, you know, it's a one mana, on one, one first strike and haste. That's what we're using it for. We don't have any other knights or anything in the deck, but it doesn't matter because we wanted another one drop that was hasty. We're playing two Legion War Boss, two Bone Crusher Giant. Uh, Bone Crusher, I know, doesn't fit well with the Cavalcade side of this, but having the removal spell there and still a bigger body to put down later that still does more damage, you can all of a sudden be, I mean, you know, say a six, six buck creatures here, Bone Crusher trades with it with Torbrun. Uh, but this deck just has the ability to outright kill you so so fast. We're playing three Castle Ember with the Pumper guys if we need to, because again you have these situations where you go to combat, have your Cavaclade trigger trigger stack, and then you pump them up. I don't want to live in this world with that, but it's here. Two more decks to go. Let's go. So now one of the most fun decks that I've made, and one that looks outright disgusting to me, is Abzan Midrange. For anybody watching the Versus series, they kind of did an Abzan list, and I, mine's decently similar to what they were doing, actually, but I've got some differences here. Uh, the main reason I'm excited for this is we have a 4 of Questing Beast. I think Questing Beast is an insane card. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen that, it's a mouthful of text. We'll go over it real quick. It's 4 mana total, 4-4, four, four, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. No big deal. Questing Beast can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, so it can be chump blocked for very easily. Uh, combat damage will be dealt to creatures you control by creature control can't be prevented so luckily next to the fate is out of the format but if it was this would just be a beat against it lastly whenever it deals combat damage to an opponent it deals that much damage to a target planeswalker that player controls this makes the fairy look stupid this makes so many planeswalkers look stupid it's a big big boy it's terrifying we have three of Tulsa Mirror because we also have two Garrick I really want to see these two go. The triggers start stacking. We're stacking wolves. We're fighting things. We're gaining life. There's a lot of just sweet, sweet things you can do in this deck. It's got such a good top end there. Uh, we play a couple of Kethas. I'm not sure if Kethas is really great in this deck, but he does help reduce the mana cost of so many of your things since a lot of this deck is just legendaries. Uh, we still have Nissas. We have Vraska. Uh, we have just, it's just good stuff. It's just Abzan good stuff. And I am super, super excited to try this out. Gold fishing seems amazing with this deck, but again, it's all about playing against someone. But I can't imagine a lot of creature decks just being able to stand up to some of the raw power this deck provides. So I'm looking forward to it. We'll hope the mana can work with it. You know, again, three color decks in this meta are going to be pretty difficult to work with. But we're going to try it out and see how it goes. One more deck. Let's look at it. Let's go. Last deck of the day we have here is Jun Midrange. Uh, calling it Jun is kind of cheating because we really just have the black mana for Garrick, Curse Huntsman. So we're really a gruel deck of smashing, smashing, splashing. We'll call it smashing for this smashing black. Uh, we have four of Pell Collector starting off the curve a little low there. We get that two drop slot. We have some Paradise Druid because we're kind of ramping up to our bigger creatures here. Now a sneaky one we have here is also Wildborn Preserver, which we talked about in Simic Flash. I know this may look off in the deck, but we got to look here. There are no humans in the deck. And I, I imagine there's a lot of times where somebody on aggro starts off on turn one and you're holding up this two mana. Nobody's going to expect you and Gruul will be flashing in anything, but here you go with this guy. You play a lot of creatures in the deck, you can pump this up, and this way it doesn't force you to be tapping out every turn. Like, say if you have a Questing Beast and a Paradise Druid, maybe you decide on three, you want to play your Paradise Druid, and then tap, pay two extra to put two counters on this Preserver. Uh, but anyway, we got Spellbreakers, we have Questing Beasts, we have Bonecrusher Giants, Once Upon a Time. I think if you're playing a green deck, you play four of Once Upon a Time. 
Until I'm taught otherwise, that's the way I'm going to do it. Now, we do have a lot of Planeswalkers in this deck, and a Questing Beast is a big thing. This will have to change. But for the time being, we have two Domri and Archibolas, because we know how good that was in Gruul when it was shining. We have two Nissa who shakes the world, because she shakes our worlds and shakes my body. And woo! Sorry about that. Uh, two Sarkon get these Planeswalkers up and flying, and again, at the top end, two Garrett Curse Huntsman. That emblem of Garrick plays really well in this set because you have so many creatures that actually want that emblem. Uh, just seems super mean, super nasty, and super disgusting. One card that's not in here, but I probably should put in here, is the uh, the green the green artifact that was spoiled. I may need one or two of those in here, and I probably should add that. But overall, I still think we're pretty close with this list, and this is where it wants to be. So that's all I've got. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if you're new here, follow me, subscribe, you know, stick around. We're a pretty fun group around here, I like to think. Uh, really looking forward to some standard. I've already got the 50 packs ball on here on Arena to open when we get there. Uh, I'll actually even be doing a, a physical box opening because I happened to buy one for the first time in ages. So we'll have that collector's pack and we'll have a, a box to open. But join us here for some magic. It's going to be a fun standard season, I hope. Looking forward to having y'all. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.